Hi, my name is Sheree Bowman, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about Universal Design Basics today. Before we get started, it's important to understand that Universal Design means that the design is usable by everyone. We aren't designing something specifically for one group of people or for several groups of people. These designs should be highly usable by a wide range of people, covering everybody equally and giving access to people with a wide range of needs. The NDA, or National Disability Authority, offers seven principles that are core to universal design. These principles are equitable use, flexibility in use, simple and intuitive use, perceptible information, tolerance for error, low physical effort, and size and space for approach and use. We are going to go over these more in the following sections. The first NDA principle is equitable use. The design should be useful to everyone, regardless of ability, and it should be usable in the same way by all unless equivalent options are necessary. So this design should be usable in just about the same way by every single person no matter what needs they have or regardless of whether they have no special needs at all. This design should work for everybody in just about the same way unless something really specific needs to be done for a specific user or group of users. The second NDA principle is flexibility in use. The design should provide a variety of options for use and be adaptable to individuals' abilities and preferences. This means that there are optional features as part of the design that might work better for certain people. So, imagine yourself at a subway station. When you're getting on the subway train, you might not need a handbar to help yourself get on the train, but another person might. While this handbar doesn't affect your experience at all, it may be just what somebody else needs to safely get on the train. The third NDA principle is simple and intuitive. The purpose of the design and its features should be easy to understand regardless of user background. So no matter who you are or what your needs are, the purpose of what this thing is for should be clear to you and its features should be easy for you to understand and use. It doesn't matter who you are, you should be able to easily tell what this thing is and what it's for and how to use it. The fourth NDA principle is perceptible information. A person's sensory abilities should not stop him or her from getting information from the design. Multiple formats should be provided. So again, I want you to imagine yourself at a subway station. There's going to be plenty of information provided visually, and that will work for many people, but not all people. So we could also provide this information audibly with someone reading aloud the information, and hopefully we could provide some kind of braille translation for people who cannot hear or see. The fifth NDA principle is tolerance for error. The design should reduce the possible chances for accidents and hazards and effectively address any mistakes that might occur during use. Providing flat thresholds for people in wheelchairs or people with limited mobility can reduce the risk of accidents caused by people tripping on the threshold. This also provides added safety for people without limited mobility as they may trip on the threshold too. So it serves a double purpose, making it an important part of any universal design involving thresholds. Incorporating an undo or back option makes the design easier to use and less frustrating for users who might make a simple mistake and need to go back and fix it. Everyone makes mistakes sometimes, 
So this is also a very important part of any universal design involving the input of information. The sixth NDA principle is low physical effort. The design should require little or no physical effort for use. Users should feel comfortable and feel no fatigue during or after use. This design principle must take into account the needs of people with special needs, but it also makes the user experience more enjoyable for any person who might use the product or be a part of the experience. The seventh and final NDA principle is size and space for approach and use. Enough space for any user should be incorporated into the design, no matter the physical build or abilities of the user. People come in a huge range of shapes and sizes, and we must take that into account when designing spaces for many or any different people to use. We must take into account that people who need to use a walker, a wheelchair, a motorized mobility device, or bring a stroller onto whatever the user experience is, will be using this space as well as people just using their own two feet. This also means that if there are buttons or information input requirements for the experience, we must make sure that these are accessible to anybody and that they are not too high for certain people to reach or too difficult for some people to use. An example of a product that you have probably experienced that features many universal design elements are elevators. Elevators must be large enough to accommodate wheelchairs and other mobility and health equipment and they must be large enough to accommodate strollers as well. They also must be tall enough to accommodate people who are very tall. They feature simple keypads with easy to read options and include braille for people who need it. They also have self-leveling floors that make the floor of the elevator match up to the floors of exit and entrance areas, which is very important to reduce the risk of accidents and increase accessibility to a wide range of people. Notice the features in this photo that show how easy to use an elevator is. The buttons are low enough that anybody should be able to reach them. The input system is a simple touch of a button, which should be doable by most users. And each number is highly contrasting with its black background, making it easy for anybody to see. And each number features a braille translation so that people who need braille can easily tell which button they should push. We have talked about several features that you might include in a subway system to ensure that that system is usable by all people. But at this point, I want you to do some problem solving. Imagine what other features you would include in a public transportation system to ensure that the system is usable by all people. You can pause the video and write them down if you'd like. Some things you will need to consider when designing such a system are how will you create safe entry and exit zones for people who cannot move quickly? And how will you ensure that transitions happen slowly regardless of who is entering or exiting the train. You don't want someone getting stuck in the middle of a transition. You must also ensure that the flow of traffic is efficient for everyday use and for keeping with schedules. Some other things to consider are, how will people who cannot see navigate the area independently? How can you make the experience smoother for people who cannot hear? How will you accommodate the different heights of people? I challenge you to think about these things, research them, and pay attention next time you are using a public system or even a product in your own home. Do you notice some of the features that have been discussed in this video? Do you notice any others that address universal design very well? Are there features that make this design 
particularly easy for you to use, but that would also make the design easy to use for somebody that has special needs that are different than your own needs. These are all questions that those involved in universal design work to answer when designing. Products, environments, public transportation systems, modes of information transfer, and learning and training procedures and materials, among other things. Universal design means paying attention to all of the details, big or small, that make a user experience good or bad, no matter who is using the product, the environment, or the learning materials. Remember that universal design means that the design is usable by everyone. Universal designs make experiences and products easily usable by whoever might be a part of them or a user of them, while creating a comfortable and appealing experience for anyone and everyone. I would like to thank you for taking a few minutes of your day to learn about the universal design principles with me. Thank you to the National Disability Authority and Dr. Robert Gibson from Emporia State University. The content of this presentation is based on the resources from the National Disability Authority. See the link for details. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. The photograph used in this presentation is from Libreshot.com, taken by Martin Vorl under a public domain license. Thank you so much for being a part of this learning experience. I hope you're able to take this knowledge and put it to use in your own life.